three of our secondary students were winners of the Black History Essay Contest, sponsored by Assemblyman Frank Scarcados. In previous contests, the Assemblyman Scarcados has sponsored several of our students who recognized for the quality of their work. The Board of Education thanks Assemblyman Scarcados for joining us tonight to recognize this year's winners. I would like to ask Dr. Elizabeth Van Dyke to come to the podium and help us out and help Mr. Scarcados hand out the awards. Ms. Scarcados, you want to come up to the podium also, please? Thank you. Good evening, members of the Board of Education, district staff, students, parents, and friends. My name is Dr. Elizabeth Tendike. I'm the secondary director. Last fall, I received a phone call from Gwen Johnson, who was a Poughkeepsie-based community liaison for Assemblyman Frank Scarpatos. She informed me that Assemblyman Scarpatos was hosting a Black History Month as a contest. So we received a wonderful collection of posters, which contained a quotation from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We distributed those posters to our middle schools and our high school, and many of our English teachers encouraged students to write essays in which they responded <coughs> to that quotation. We sent uh, inspirational essays off to the Assemblyman's office, and I am very proud and honored to report that three of our students were selected by Assemblyman Frank Scartagos to be recognized tonight as winners of that contest. So Assemblyman Scartagos, thank you very much for being here tonight, and um, we look forward to learning who our winners are. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Good evening, rather. Um, Madam uh, Board President, um, Superintendent, Members of the board, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for having me this evening. Um, I want to thank the board as well as the teachers uh, for working with my uh, staff in putting this annual, annual event together. Um, it gives us an opportunity to get to know each other better. And um, I also want to thank you. This particular school district for all you do, uh, for all your efforts to do more with less. I appreciate your professionalism and the way you try to handle things. And uh, you, to me, you have been a, a role model uh, for what can be done when people really get together and try to do the right thing for the students. And so I, I do appreciate all the work that you're doing in making sure that our students receive the best education. And I can assure you that I will continue to do what I can at the state level um, to help you as much as I can. And um, so I, I, I do appreciate all that has been taking place here uh, in the NFA School District. So we can start off, Scartados. I, I would like to, at this point, uh, recognize you to this audience as having, as an assemblyman at the state level, uh, for bringing in over a half a million dollars to our district in the past two years. That money has gone a long way to saving jobs and saving programs for our kids, and I thank you very much. You're welcome, and I wish I could do more, and we will try to do more. As to the essays, uh, by the way, this essay contest, um, the, uh, it's done once a year, the uh, uh, Black History a Month essay contest, and uh, this year we chose, by the way, a theme uh, no. that I thought it was pretty clever. If I may read the theme to you, it's actually a quote from Martin Luther King, as we all know. You know, Martin Luther King was a man of extraordinary talents, and I am glad that the students took the opportunity to really contemplate and think about all the contributions and sacrifices he made for us. A man that was inspired by the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ and um, and the success of Gandhi in India and in his 
peaceful pursuit for a resolution. And so with those two things as his armaments, he set out to change the American ethos, the American culture, and in the process, he changed the world. And the quote here says that if a man is called to be a street sweeper, he should sweep the streets, just as Michael painted, or Beethoven composed music, or Shakespeare wrote po poetry. He should sweep streets so well that all the hosts hosts of heaven and earth will pause to say, he lived a great street sweeper who did his job well. I think it's a good model for everyone, not just the young, but also every single one of us, adults as well as young, instilling the work ethic. And so the students took on this theme and um, really succeeded in putting some great essays together. And we have three winners tonight which I'd like to call up here and present them with a, a certificate by both uh, the school district as well as uh, the, my office, the New York State Assembly. Uh, and we have, uh, we didn't pick first and second and the third place winners, they're all winners, really. And we are very proud of what they've done. I am proud, I'm sure the teachers are proud, proud and so are indeed the parents. And so the first winner, and by the way, in addition to the certificates, we also have $20 gift certificate to the Barnes and Nobles that would go with it. Hopefully that would be inspired by going to the Barnes and Nobles. And of course, my office is always open to them and anyone, anyone else for that matter that wishes to come. So on behalf of the New York State Assembly and the people of the state of New York, I, Frank Spartatos, I am pleased to confer upon you this assembly citation as the winner of my annual Black History Month essay contest this 28th day of May 2013. And uh, the first winner is Ahib Azagaili.
we have the, uh, we recognize this evening, the Winter Sports Scholar Athletes. These students perform with distinction on the field and in the classroom and are very deserving of the Scholar Athlete, athlete Team Award they have received. In addition to their sportsmanship, they achieved high marks in the academic field. I would like to ask Mr. Jack Major, our District Athletic Director, to come to the podium and help us recognize our honorees. Good evening, Madam President, board members, fellow city, or excuse me, uh, Newburgh and Large City School District stakeholders. The New York State Public High School Athletic Association honors select student athletes and their teams three times a year with the Scholar Athlete Team Award. This award is given to teams that have a predetermined number of student athletes that combine together to achieve a grade point average of 90% or higher. This winter, we had four teams qualify for this prestigious award. Now, if you can all keep a secret, tomorrow night is our Block N Senior Athletic Award uh, presentation, and I did find some information out just recently that I'd like to present at this time, but as long as you don't tell anybody, so this is the big splash for tomorrow. This year, 17 of our 23 athletic teams received the Scholar Athlete Team Award. 17 of 23. So please don't. At this time, I'd like to have our coaches that are in attendance come to the front of the room to assist with the distribution of our certificates. Now, I'd also like to inform you, and I'm sure you're well aware of that this is a Scholar Athlete Team Award. One of the difficulties that we have this evening is that we are acknowledging and recognizing both girls' indoor track and boys' indoor track and they both have a track meet today at Warwick Valley High School. So many of them are competing as we speak in a meet called the Fast Times Invitational just prior to the state qualifying meet that occurs on Thursday at uh, Middletown High School. So a number of our scholar athletes from track and field, unfortunately, are, are doing the uh, athletic side of the uh, house, so to speak. Anyway, uh, our coaches that are here this evening are Coach Desiderio from Girls Basketball and also Zachary Williams representing Boys Swimming. Our first team to be recognized is the Boys Indoor Track and Field team. With 12 members, they achieved an overall grade point average of 90.356. The honorees from the Boys Track Team, they are in attendance, are Xavier Boone, Zayer Brown, Devin Patino, Aaron Forbes, Xavier Ford, Connor Freeman, Kendrick Gaynor, John Kennedy, Renato Meza, Eric Perez, Ed Thorne Walden, and Arthur White. Any are in attendance, please come forward. They may all be in war. It looks that way, unfortunately. My apologies to the board. Our second team to be honored this evening is the girls indoor track and field team, coached by Bruce Green, again with 12 athletes that were considered um, or that were required for this award. They achieved a grade point average of 92.554. They are Mariel Pronte, Kaylee Baines, Sarah Cordes, Melisanta Corlett, Jordan Gizzarelli, Diana McCasco, Gabrielle Rodriguez Asher, Raquel Rodriguez Asher, Tahira Shadi, Alfred Sickler, Andrea Pascal, and Maimuna Jami. And unfortunately, it sounds <laughs> And I worked so hard on this name. The next team to be recognized is in attendance, the boys swimming team coached by Zachary Wayne. His team required 11 scholar athletes. They achieved a grade point average of 92.916. Uh, the first athlete is Juan Patico. <laughs> Matthew 
Johnson. <laughs> David Corgan Ashevelli.
Thank you, Mr. Kizo, Madam President, Board Member. Thank you, for everybody. Yeah. 
so uh, yeah. I know this is a little bit of a change. So, very much Is it in um, this policy or another policy, or is it in um, the handbook where we have um, the information on the college? So that, so that specifically states in there about the college visit. Correct. Can we put the attachment in there to see that policy? Should we do that, Mr. Schultz? To, to put uh, a reference here you know, to the other policy that speaks specifically to college visits. Those college visits <coughs> would not be the first activity of the individual or their parents? Correct. It, it could be either, but oftentimes it is a parent taking their student on a college visit. Right. You, you could add a third, which which would be um, college visits, and um, are recognized under um, the district's attendance policy. Mm -hmm. as um, excused absence, but it's not deemed to be school sponsored. Yes, Mr. Levenstein. Um, Mr. Shaw, could you just read what you said to add on? Because I don't know if it's completely true what you're saying, because it, it's different for freshmen and sophomores versus juniors and seniors. And I don't think you make that distinction in what you just, just said. Excuse me, I thought we were making it the same for all of them. We, we did change that. That was changed to uh, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. We, we, we didn't want an extra policy. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We didn't want an extra restriction on the ninth and tenth graders. So to give an incentive to to go. Get to so then that one would read true. Right. With it, with uh, David just read. Okay. So this this would be an amendment to policy twenty three forty. Um, it would add a paragraph three on the first page to read college visits hyphen are recognized under the district's attendance policy as excused absences, uh, but are not to be deemed school sponsored. Can I have a motion to amend that policy as just read by the attorney? So second. Roll call. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Buchek? Yes. Um, next would be a motion to suspend the policy adoption protocols to adopt this policy at this evening's meeting. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. And now to move the policy for adoption. Can I have a motion? Oh, second. Roll call. 
Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Willow? Yes. Ms. Kuchar? Yes. That was all the policies for <coughs> Mr. Shaw. That last one did all the policies. Okay. I'll check. Board? No, I mean, it's just 2023. Okay. So we'll go back. We had an open motion on the floor and I called for questions and Ms. Prokash brought that up. So if there's no other questions on the remaining policies that I asked for approval, I will take roll call. We did that. Roll call. Mr. Howard. Yes. Mr. Lawson. Yes. Mr. Levenstein. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Ms. McAfee. Yes. Ms. Prokash. Yes. Ms. Red. Yes. Mr. Woodall. Yes. Ms. Kuchar. Yes. That concludes my items this evening. Next item on the agenda is from the superintendent. Thank you, Madam President. First resolution A is to award bids for the Foster Town renovation project, which was discussed and presented by Terry at our workshop. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard. Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution B to amend the agreement with CSR to provide redesign services for security enhancements. Can I have a motion? So moved. Questions or comments? Roll call. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodhull? Yes. Ms. Buschek? Yes. Resolution C to amend agreement with Manuda Architecture to provide redesign services for security enhancements. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? <coughs> Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhull? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution D, to amend agreement with Samuel Architecture, PPLC, to provide pre-designed services for security enhancements. Can I have a motion? So Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhull? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution E, to amend agreement with Armin Payment and Associates, Inc. to provide program manager, owner, representative services through December 31st, 2013. I have a motion. So Questions or comments? Yes, Mr. Lawson. So we, we know that there will be services as they will pass December 31st. My question is, why would we contract for a period of time and then we need services for purpose at that workshop? I just want to read it again. We, and we had a discussion at workshop, if I remember correctly, um, that those services would be done on a per job basis as necessary, as opposed to the type of services being delivered um, the way they have been. Mr. Pacella, you might be able to speak to that a little bit. Yeah, after the closeout of all the projects, there's still a lot of clerical work that needs to be done with the education department for the final cost reports. Um, and we're in the process of reviewing other firms that do such an item. And then we'll confer with this, this group to uh, see how we move forward to complete those projects for the year. So, is it, so are we saying that it's possible that we might hire another firm to come in and do the remaining of the, remainder of the work? No, not necessarily, because to do that type of job, you have to really audit the whole construction process, paperwork, in regards to payments, the bonding, uh, anything that was done with SCD. This is more like a fact-finding <coughs> thing of actually what they, these companies do charge, because uh, Armand Damon and McMorty, as part of their contract, during the term of their contract, did these final cost reports on the projects that were closed out while in their term of the contract. 
they're going to be outside of the term of the contract at this point if you go through December because these projects won't be closed out. We have 18 months from the certificate of substantial completion to file these reports. So technically, they'll be outside of the contract, so we're going to review to find out what a firm comes in and does for old projects for school districts. I know this is recently done because State Ed had uh, extended their guidelines for old projects. I just don't know enough about the companies that, that do perform this type of function. In order to try to get a fair and accurate price for these services, we want to investigate what the um, going rate is for this type of service. Yes, Ms. Brokosh. So, if we're, if we're extending them to December 31st, which is what I understood. So basically, our, most of our, our work is going to be done. But we do have three projects, I believe, that's going to be done over the summer of 2014. That's correct. Right. Now, during that project, then we won't have an owner rep basically doing that. So the, the job that the owner rep did for the other projects is going to fall on somebody else within the district to do? Is that what we're going to be doing? Or, or you know, I mean, I know we have the architects looking at it, but we've always had an owner rep. Um, right. Overseeing, overseeing that. Overseeing the yes. district. So is that going to fall on somebody within the district then? That, that, that will be determined by the pricing that we do with the other piece. They will still be here because they'll still be working on closeouts. Now, what we determine in that period of time from January till the end of the summer of 2014. We don't have an answer for that right now, but probably if the prices are right, they will be doing the overseeing of that work okay. in the summertime, as well as the closeouts. Okay. Okay? okay? That's the best answer I can give you at this yeah. point. Because we need to negotiate, we need to find out what the going rate is for the closeout documents, and then we'll incorporate, include that in some kind of an amicable agreement with them. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? No. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Fuchek? Yes. Resolution F is a uh, report from Andy Velez, the Executive Director of Operations and Maintenance. Thank you, Mr. Piso. Tonight we have uh, three requests from two organizations. We discussed this at the workshop last week. There were some requests made by the board. I sent all the information to the board members that Friday for the package on Friday. Is there a motion? Second. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Fuchek? Yes. That concludes this session, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Pisa. Our next item on the agenda is from the Assistant Superintendent for Student Intervention and Support Services. Thank you, Madam President. I have uh, three items for you this evening. The first is a resolution to arrange the placement of students with disabilities as recommended by the District's Committee on Special Education and the District's Committee on Preschool Special Education and approve the authorization of funds to implement the special education program and services consistent with such recommendations. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Second item is a resolution uh, for the Board of Education the New York Large City School District to authorize uh, the Superintendent of Schools, Mr. Ralph Pizzo, to execute an agreement with the County of Orange for preschool services as required by the district special education department for the 2013-2014 school year. Such agreement shall be incorporated by reference with the meeting minutes. The funding source is the preschool special education funding programs. 
I have a motion. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Fuchek? Yes. Thank you. And the third item is a resolution to enter into a consultant agreement with Strong Learning Incorporated to provide supplemental specialized math instruction pursuant to a student's IEP for a time period of May 29, 2013 through June 30, 2013 at an amount not to exceed $4,000. The funding source is general funds. I have a motion. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Thank you, Madam President. That's it for student intervention and support services. Thank you, Mrs. Lewis. Our next item on the agenda is from the Executive Director for Curriculum and Instruction. Thank you, Madam President. The first item is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to approve an overnight field trip for students to attend a summer workshop at Boston University from July 16th to the 24th, 2013. The funding source is the Boston University of New York College of Science and National Science Foundation grant. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Fuchek? Yes. The second item is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to approve an overnight field trip for students to attend the Seahorse Key Marine Laboratory at the University of Florida on June, from June 23rd to June 29th. And the funding source is the Black Rock Forest Consortium Scholarship. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. <laughs> My third item is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement with Brayside Camp for Project Hope students to attend the camp program. The funding source is the McKinney Vendor Grant. Can I have a motion? I'll move. Second. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Fuchek? Yes. My fourth item is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement with Orange County Employment and Training Administration for Summer Youth Employment Program. The funding source is the 2013 Summer Youth Employment Program. I have a motion. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Fuchek? Yes. Item E is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement with learner-centered initiatives or professional development program to support district teachers and district teacher leaders. Can I have a motion? <coughs> Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Fuchek? Yes. And my final item is a resolution to approve conference requests. I have a motion. Questions or comments? Yes, Ms. Prokosh. Uh, I'd like to um, table, bring this into executive session for discussion. If possible. The whole, uh, the whole piece or a particular item? Um, the third 
from the bottom, third from the bottom, and the bottom. On the, on the, on the one that we got tonight. Just for clarification. So that's number five if we were to number them. Okay. Can I have a motion to remove um, number five? No, it would be. Motion to table numbers six and eight off of the uh, conference attendance request. Okay. Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? No. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokoff? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchak? Yes. Can I have a motion to approve the conference request for... Uh, I'm sorry. Madam President, you see the vote on that. I just need roll call for numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 7. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levinsky? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Madam President, that concludes my items. Thank you, Dr. Shanahan. Our next item on the agenda is from the Assistant Superintendent for Business. Thank you, Madam President. First item is a resolution to authorize the awarding of the 2012-2013 spring athletic transportation bid. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution D is to authorize the awarding of school lunch bids for flat paper plastic, dishwashing, ice cream, and snacks. I have a motion. So, questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item C is a resolution to accept a donation of an automobile for Mr. Dean Aloja to the MFA Auto Mechanic Instructional Shop. I have a motion. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item D is a resolution to accept the donation of salad bars from Turbana Banana and Price Chopper Supermarkets to MFA and Bales Gate School. Can I have a motion? No more. Second. Questions or comments? Was that first one? <laughs> 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 banana, banana. Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Lucek? Yes. Item E is a resolution to authorize the board president to execute an agreement with the Devereaux Foundation for the 2013-2014 student Committee on Special Education. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item F is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools or his designee to transfer $275,804 from the debt service fund to the capital fund. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? 
Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Buczek? Yes. Item G's resolution authorized payment of property tax refund for two and two court orders. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item H is a resolution to authorize the board president to execute a contract with Abraham Stable Incorporated for the New York State Summer Food Service Program. I have a motion. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item I is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an employee leasing agreement with Laborers Local 17 training and education fund for innovations and construction career program. This, this program has been ongoing with the local laborers um, since we started the construction career academy. We didn't get to talk too much about this in the workshop. Um, the Local 17 designates one of their top trainers to work with our students. So this is an annual uh, lease that goes on with them. I have a motion. Move, move, second. Questions or comments? Roll call. Oh, yes, Ms. Brokash. Um, Mr. Costello, is that attached a 10 month or is that something over the summer too? No, it's 10 months. 10 months, right? Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item J is a resolution to accept the monthly bills on the first. I have a motion. Mm -hmm. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Resch? Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Fuchek? Yes. That concludes my item on there. Thank you, Mr. Pacelli. Our next item on the agenda is from the Assistant Superintendent for Human Resources. Thank you, Madam President. The first um, item, A through I, on the Human Resources agenda, on the professional side, we have leave of absence, retirements, resignation, and on the civil service side, we have appointments, change of location, return from leave of absence, retirements, resignations, the college workers, and both the current and former employees who passed away. I have a motion. Mm -hmm. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution J is the resolution for professional change of status. Can I have a motion? So Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? No. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Lujek? Yes. Resolution K is to adopt the revised 2013-2014 district calendar. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. <coughs> Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution L is to approve July the 4th and July the 5th as district holidays. I have a motion? So we'll move. Second. Questions or comments? 
Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhull? Yes. Ms. Fuchek? Yes. Uh, Madam President, there's a revised Resolution M on the table this evening. The revision is in item number four. The blue pages on the table. We had another retirement come in over the weekend, therefore saving a teacher from being laid off. So the change is to reflect that retiree and one less layoff. I have a motion. So we'll second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution N is a resolution to abolish the non-pedagogical positions. I have a motion. Second. Mm -hmm. Questions or comments? Yes, Mr. Woodhull. Uh, yes, I'd like to break item three out uh, for a separate vote. Motion to pull out item three of this resolution. Okay, item three will be separated out. Any other questions or comments? I'll take roll call on items one, two, and four. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Rokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Wuchek? Yes. I'll take roll call on item three of resolution N. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? No. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Madam President, there is a revised resolution O on the table this evening. The revision came about in the um, title of the positions we're asking you to create. When we discussed this um, at personnel, we described it as coordinator positions. Um, when I met with counsel to help with the resolution, we were advised that um, the term coordinator um, should not be used because the term coordinator, I wrote it down um, <laughs> that we can't use the title coordinator, um, but to use the title supervisor instead because the title coordinator is not listed under the civil service exempt titles as it applies to pedagogical and educational administrative titles. So supervisor would be a safer title to use. So the revised resolution in front of you, instead of calling the positions that were formerly called, called coordinator, are now called supervisor. And I have a motion. Questions or comments? Yes, Mrs. McAfee. So the title has changed, but everything else is the same. Yes. Uh, the, the job descriptions, are the job descriptions on the table? Yes, they are. There were a couple of changes in the job descriptions, only to reflect the um, title from coordinator to supervisor. And if you go to, for example, the job description for supervisor of school improvement, we took out of those qualifications for those similar titles the administrative experience as discussed last week. And we also added in the job goal for each one of those titles that it was an entry level administrative position. Those are the only changes that we made to the job descriptions from the time that was presented to you last week. Mrs. I, I, I 
would like to request one additional change form that I know that Mr. Forgen and I have discussed uh, occasionally, and it may have gotten lost in the shuffle. I personally would like to see the director position of, uh, of, of literacy be pre-K to 12. And I know that, that we, have, we have talked about that. Um, and I, so I don't know whether there's a particular reason why it says K to 12, but I think it should say pre-K to 12. That could have been at just a clerical error and then you can put pretty in front of that. Okay, so that's a clerical error. Can I have a motion to amend the resolution, the revised resolution O to have um, a one additional position of director of pre-K through 12 literacy. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. Maxby? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution P is for your... For Wait, I have to go back and do the... Oh, right, because I only amended it. Right. <laughs> So, any other questions or comments on the revised resolution? Oh, okay. Now I'll take. Yes, Mrs. McAfee. I, I I think it would be helpful if someone would explain these uh, positions, these changes, to the audience. Mr. Fortune. Yeah, there were a variety of um, thoughts that went into uh, our conversations with regards to uh, these particular positions, and I'll let uh, Dr. Shanahan and Ms. Rumley also weigh in on this. One of the things that we found out last year when we were doing our, our analysis of the school district uh, for its um, systemic efforts around school turnaround was that um, the strengthening teacher leadership component of the school district lacked a, an entry-level administrative position. So we have several teachers that are aspiring to move into administrative positions. However, upon our job descriptions and our expectations, they didn't have the preferred experience that we required for them to move into those particular positions. Based upon that, we were able to create these particular positions and offer opportunities for teachers who have been awaiting administrative entry-level positions to enter into that field. One of the other things that we did was we looked at a lot of the different things that were coming down from the state and Dr. Shanahan can talk a little bit more about the intensity of the work and the, the requirements of having 12-month employees versus 10-month employees do this. Uh, one of the things that we looked at was, another thing we looked at was the role of the current instructional coaches to see whether the instructional coach position could handle all of the new demands that were coming down from the state education department uh, that are placed upon not only the, the, the off central office, but also on the building principal and the assistant principal with regards to observations and evaluations and assisting teachers with curriculum writing and the modules and all that particular work. But I'm going to let Mr. Dr. Shanahan go deeper with that. All in all, when you look at the school improvement and the curriculum instruction positions, this is actually a net savings to the budget of a little bit over $100,000 uh, by converting the five instructional coaches into these particular positions. So, and it gives us 12 month positions. Dr. Shanahan, you wanna add the uh, content component to that? Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, we also eliminated a director's position to pick up the director of literacy. So it's a swap, it's one for one. It's not adding another director to the, to the budget. But we felt that we've had such a difficulty with uh, graduation rates and dropout rates and when we did some research as to what's happening in some of the other districts that are turning it around, it's that they're putting a much stronger emphasis on literacy at the secondary and at the middle level. This particular individual will give us that opportunity to work with us to enhance the reading programs at the middle and the high school. Um, 
in addition for the supervisory positions, we were looking at focusing these um, these positions more on uh, humanities on the one hand uh, and STEM on the other to help uh, the administrators uh, in what they're doing with teacher observation and curriculum work, but also with the teachers themselves uh, in a way that instructional coaches could not do. They were providing um, assistance and, and guidance in um, instruction in the classroom, but without the leverage that a, um, a supervisory position would allow. If I might add, with regard to special education, um, as you know, we currently have one administrative position that oversees all of special education, pre-K and grade 12. And uh, given the um, areas of corrective action that the New York State Education Department has identified that are critical, that we must address, there is a need uh, in order to be able to bring all of the areas of non-compliance into compliance to really think about how to get and ensure that we have administrative oversight at all levels from pre-K grade 12 and to be able to provide more direct and hands-on support for not just the process of the Committee on Special Education and ensuring the, about the timeliness of, yeah, of evaluation to program placement, but also to support building principals and assistant principals in being able to effectively supervise and help develop the professional growth of our special education programming. So those are those are the for the special education supervisor positions a restructuring of the way um, the oversight will go within grade level bands and to be able to provide much needed uh, supervision and support to support the work of building principals and assistant principals. Yes, Mr. Lawson. Uh, I also think, Mr. Porch, can you share why this is such, such an important thing for the students? that we have this more support for teachers and, and more direction for teachers. Can you, can you share the evidence why it's so important for students? For the students, absolutely. I think that there's a variety of reasons. If you start with the um, change from the director of secondary ed to the director of literacy, um, there, there's a huge opportunity where we can have that particular director work with our academic intervention service teachers to really work on the skill deficits or the, the learning deficits that those students are, are confronted with so that they can be successful in the mainstream or in the core area classrooms. So there's a direct support to a classroom teacher who will then have a direct positive impact on the life of the child to improve their, their literacy skills, but also to improve their opportunities to engage in the core curriculum and have that confidence to be able to, to pursue education that they possibly would not have pursued in the, in the past. When you look at the, the um, work that's coming down and the expectations that are coming down from the state regarding our preparing our students for the 21st century, you hear STEM, STEM, STEM constantly. And this, this gives us not only the opportunity to really focus with our middle level teachers with someone who has experience in STEM to support the building administrators and the teachers to impact those students through STEM um, it will also do the same thing for the high school. So we're going, we're, we're shifting from providing specific and, and targeted support at the middle level and specific and targeted support at the high school level to have an impact on the role of the classroom teacher to support the growth of the students in the classroom. So it's a, it's a tiered approach that we're looking for. Um, it, it's, it's a cost-effective approach that we've been able to come up with. Um, and it provides full year support through the design and development of our curriculum. Those modules are coming down um, not as fast as we thought. They're, they're coming a little bit slower at the middle and the high school level, but we've been assured now that once, now that they're moving in, in a different direction at the state, that they'll be coming down a lot quicker and we're going to have to react a lot faster uh, to prepare our students to take the new Regents exams that are perfect we're, we're moving towards in the upcoming years. Yes, Mrs. McAfee. 
I would also suggest that by doing this, uh, and, and you know, I'd like to remind the board that, that these changes came to the curriculum committee, which I chair first, and uh, were approved by, by that committee, and then went to personnel mm -hmm. and, and were approved uh, before coming to the full board. But I'd like to suggest that I think these changes are responsive, and responsive to teacher concerns that, that have been raised particularly in this past year, uh, a concern over the fact that we had eliminated most of the directors, uh, concern over the way the coaches were being used, uh, and, and whether they, that was getting the maximum benefit. So I think that, that this is an example of the fact that, that the district is reassessing and tweaking what we're doing and, and trying very hard to do it in a way that, that meets our needs better and also is financially responsible. So I, I just like to reiterate to everyone my personal support and the, the support of the board members that I've worked with. And I, I just want to reiterate also that, you know, this is that entry level position. We expect our administrators in the schools to be instructional leaders. Right. This is going to grow entry level administrators into instructional leadership with the instructional leadership capacity they'll need to be an assistant principal or a principal because these are the first level entry into administration. Okay. These are the principals that end up tomorrow. Absolutely, we hope. Yes. Other questions or comments? Roll call please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Suchek? Yes. Resolution P is for your information only. It's the upcoming tenure recommendations for um, administrators and teachers. And at this point, Madam President, I would ask that we could add resolutions Q, R, S, and T to the agenda. And those resolutions are on the table. But a motion to add resolutions Q, R, S, and T to the agenda. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Uchek? Yes. Resolution Q is the resolution to appoint individuals to the various um, extended school year programs and the various positions, both administrative, teaching, and support positions. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Fuchek? Yes. Resolution R is a resolution to appoint Marilyn Scott, and that should not say acting assistant principal. That should say substitute assistant principal. We've had an unexpected long-term leave of absence, um, so uh, this appoints Marilyn Scott, who was a former administrator in the district, to fill that position on a per diem basis um, until we know when the other, the other individual can return and the funding sources to fund balance. Mr. Shaw, do I need a motion to amend the resolution yeah. to replace acting with substitute? I have a motion. Second. Roll call. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Fresh? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Can I have a motion to approve Resolution R as amended? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. 
Resolution S is an additional professional retirement. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Buchek? Yes. And Resolution T, our additional civil service change of status appointments. I have a motion. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Buchek? Yes. discussion and comment on non-agenda items. I have uh, one person that signed up to speak, and after that, um, we'll take anyone else that um, would like to speak. First, we'll hear from Bonnie Champion Finkenauer. Education members, administration, administrators, and directors. First of all, I'd like to thank you all for all the hard work you do. I know you put in many, many hours, and it's really, we really appreciate it. You may feel that we don't, but we really do appreciate it. Um, my name is Bonnie Champion, or Bonnie Finkenauer. I go by both names. I began my educational career in Newburgh in 1955 at the Foster Town School when it was a four room schoolhouse with Mrs. Foray. Um, I went to South Junior and NFA, and I presently teach uh, reading at Meadow Hill. So the reason I'm here, I'd like to request that you do whatever you can to offer the retirement incentive as a separate item. Um, I personally know five teachers at Meadow Hill who will, would like to retire um, uh, if the incentive is offered, um, I'm here with Shirley Jones, who's a reading teacher, and Karen Peters, the ESL teacher. I know there are many other people who are ready to retire, so if you could please do whatever you can, um, it would re really be appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Champion, Pink an hour. Mr. Shaw, would you like to speak to that at all? The, um, the issue of offering a retirement incentive to teachers who are members of the NTA bargaining unit is something that must be the subject of bargaining with the union representative. So um, we certainly can't represent the individual members they do, but it's something that you could bring to their attention and then uh, the board responds to all negotiations items uh, through that uh, venue. I have, and I believe that they're doing everything Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak on non-agenda items? Please step to the podium and give your name and address. Hello, good evening, how are you guys? Um, I spoke with you probably about a month ago, and there goes my voice again, um, concerning kindergarten in Newburgh. Um, I'm sorry, your name? My name is Courtney Baxter. I live in New Windsor. My son, <coughs> will be attending kindergarten in September. And my family and I are curious as to what's gonna happen with our district. We're wondering what the deficit is now that the budget's passed, when you plan on meeting with the teachers union again, and when the decision will be made as to what schools will be closed and what will happen with the kindergarten program. Thank you, Ms. Baxter. I can tell you um, the budget gap at this point is approximately $1.9 million. 
Um, the district um, hopes to be back at the negotiating table and our negotiating teams are uh, working with the respective unions to um, see if that's going to be possible. The board um, and the district as a whole has made no decisions on any further reductions at this time. Just FYI, in the event that I have to send my son to a private kindergarten program, tuition is owed before the end of this school district, before the end of this school year. At least half of the tuition for next year's school year is owed by the end of this school year. Okay. So I, I would lose it if I gave it to them. Thank you for bringing that to our attention, Ms. Baxter. In addition to that, there are no daycares in the area that will take a five-year-old student. None. Thank you, Ms. Baxter. Is there anyone else that would like to speak on non-agenda items? Being none, be it resolved that the board hereby recesses into executive session for the following purpose, to discuss the employment history of particular individuals and for the employment history of particular corporations and for collective bargaining under the Taylor Law for CSEA, NSAA, and NTA. The board may take action after the executive session. Can I have a motion? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lofton? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. Baxby? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Thank you all for being here with us this evening.